Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be talking about how to name simple aromatic compounds. And so to start with, we're going to go with the basics. So what is the simplest structure you're ever going to see? It's this guy. That is benzene, good old benzene, and that is its very simple chemical formula. Now notice that this has three double bonds and three single bonds. Those are our double bonds right here, and then the single bonds surround it on the opposite side. All right. Now recall that when we were talking about bond length, we said that a single bond and a double bond, if we're looking at carbons, should have different lengths. But when we measure the actual structure of benzene and its bond length, they're all equal. So theoretically, if double and single bonds do have different bond lengths, which we know they do, uh, this structure would not look as symmetrical. So what gives benzene its unique equal bond lengths? So the simple answer is benzene stable, we know this, and so what's causing it, we have to look at the orbitals, okay? So notice that these p orbitals are representative of our carbons. So the carbons themselves have these nice delocalized pi orbitals. <coughs> Sorry. And so notice that in reality, if these p orbitals were sticking up here, that they would overlap above and below that nice little hexagon structure. And that leads to this nice ring, okay? And this ring is a delocalized pi orbital, okay? So now, whenever you see that nice benzene symbol abbreviated as this, notice that the ring there is supposed to represent something like stability, okay? So pretty much from now on, you're gonna see benzene represented like this, but in some cases, you'll see the double and single bonds still there, okay? So let's talk about benzene derivatives. Now that we know what benzene is, these are very simple functional groups that you can add to modify your benzene. So Cl, what was that? That was a halide, and we said that Cl is chloro. So that would be chlorobenzene. NO2, that would be a nitro group. We call that nitrobenzene, okay? CH3, if you can remember, that was a methyl group, so we call that methylbenzene. An old way of saying it is toluene, and sometimes you'll see that, okay? Do you remember what functional group COOH is? That was a carboxylic acid, and they all end in oic acid, so that's benzoic acid. This looks like it's these two put together, a methyl and a chloro, okay? But notice that they're attached uh, at the methyl group up here. That's where the chloro is. It's not attached to the benzene itself. So we call that chloromethylbenzene. And this is the odd one out. If you remember, OH is supposed to be an alcohol, so you might think that's called benzol but it's actually called instead phenol, okay? There's a reason for that, we'll get to that eventually. So let's say that we wanted to name something that has two of the same substituent on a benzene ring. So how do we name and number those things? Well, both of the numbers and the prefixes that we've been talking about are used to represent this and where they're located on the aromatic ring, okay? There is a shorthand way of doing this, but we're gonna talk about really this way first and then we'll get to the shorthand after. So if you think about it, if we have something as simple as just two chloro groups, there are really only three ways of arranging that on a benzene ring. I can have them two carbons apart, I can have them three carbons apart, or I can have them four carbons apart. So simply put, we would call that one, two dichlorobenzene. The one and the two are because they are two carbons apart. That would be carbon one, that would be carbon two. Remember, we want to have the smallest numbers possible, so I could not have numbered this one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? That would be one, three dichlorobenzene. Again, we want the shortest length, so that would be carbon one, two, and three, or one, two, and three. And then last but not least, obviously, that's four apart, and so there's really only one way of numbering that, and that would be one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Going in the opposite direction, it's the exact same thing in structure, okay? What's the shorthand? Well, in the old days, that would be O-dichlorobenzene, M-dichlorobenzene, and P-dichlorobenzene, okay? What do they stand for? Ortho, meta, and para, okay? So again, normally you will not be seeing these O, M, and P parts. You'll instead be seeing 1,2-di, or 1,3-di, or 1,4-di, whatever functional group you have. Let's practice that, okay? What are these functional groups? So think about that and what the numerical values would be with the prefix di. Okay, so think about this. What are these? These are methyl groups and they are one, two carbons apart. That would be one, two dimethylbenzene. 
Okay, these are nitro groups and they are four carbons apart. That would be one for dinitrobenzene. These are bromo groups. Remember, our halides just end in O there. So we have bromo, chloro, fluoro, things like that. Okay, and they are three apart. That would be again one, three dibromobenzene. So again, you could do the old system. You could put an O or a P or an M instead, and that would be acceptable. People would still know what you're talking about, but it's still not considered that formal anymore. Okay, so what groups can we attach to benzene derivatives? Okay, the previous system still stands. Okay, nothing really changes except that now we're using a benzene derivative. Okay, functional groups have priority and then alkanes. Okay, they must have the lowest possible numbers and Halogens and nitro groups, sadly, are not considered functional groups in aromatics, okay? As with branched alkanes, everything has to be written alphabetically. So here would be a structure, okay? What is the benzene derivative of this? That would be this guy right here. There's an OH. It's all the stuff in green. That is a phenol group, okay? Again, sadly, halogens are not considered actual functional groups okay so what would this be that's a phenol group that would then be given priority and that would be carbon one this would then have to be carbon two so it'd be two chlorophenol phenol being the now benzene derivative we're using to name this what about this okay looks way more complicated again poor little halogens you are not functional groups according to the nomenclature rules for aromatics. But this CH3 is an alkane, okay, that's a methyl group. So this would be a form of methyl benzene, and then I just need to figure out my numbering. So this is definitely number one then, if this is my methyl benzene, that would be carbon two, that would be carbon three, that would be carbon four. Gotta put it alphabetically though, okay? So that would be two bromo, four chloro, and the entire thing is a methyl benzene. All right, let's practice that. So right here, okay, what is my uh, benzene derivative? That would be phenol, okay? Remember, functional groups and then alkanes are given priority. So that would be carbon one, two, three, four, five, or I could do one, two, three, four, five. Either way, I get the exact same response, okay? That would be three, five, diphenol, or sorry, dimethylphenol. So this entire group is a phenol group, that's carbon three, that's carbon five, or that's carbon three, that's carbon five. Next up, I got another phenol, and these bromo groups are attached. So how would I number that? Think about it. That's carbon one, that has to be carbon two, three, and then that has to be carbon four. I could not number it going the other way because then the numbers would not be as low as possible. What about this? Again, I have now, it looks like a nice little halogen and nitro group. Those are not given priority. So this is a methyl benzene group, okay? And then I'd have to number it one, two, three. That's where the three nitro comes from, and that would be four. I could not start numbering it the other way because that would not give these the lowest numbers possible. Last but not least, this is probably one of the most famous examples, okay? These nitro groups, sadly, again, are not given any kind of priority because they are not functional groups, but this is, okay? So that would be, again, two, three, four, five, six. So that's two, four, six trinitro, because there are three nitro groups, methyl benzene. That's TNT, okay? And they used to call that toluene. So that's where that last T comes from. So it's trinitro toluene. That's where TNT gets its name. So I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know.